Right, welcome to this review for uh, the Codex Supplement for Ultramarines here at Games Workshop. have very kindly sent me a copy along at ahead of time. So uh, this is the review for this supplement. Looks like the main chapters, Ultramarines, Imperial Fist, White Scars and so on, uh, are getting a supplement here uh, with unique stratagems and Warlord traits and so on. So it's fantastic news, really good. So you can buy the standard Space Marine Codex and then once you choose your chapter, it's one of the main ones and you can pick uh, the supplement that goes with them. So nicely specialised and great that you can uh, be rewarded for choosing a different theme for your Space Marine Force. So uh, check out GamingFigures.com. I usually get my Games Workshop stuff from them at a discounted rate uh, and they do have a gaming systems as well at, at a discounted price. So it's not too many pages here. Yeah, 80 pages. But uh, pretty substantial, really, just for one Space Marine chapter. So, and great for those of you who are into the lore and the fluff and so on, because you're going to get uh, loads more information. Now, Games Workshop can squeeze in loads more information. Uh, instead of one big codex, you're limited, so I have to briefly cover each of the chapters. Now they can dedicate a lot more space uh, to giving you uh, more lore and background information. So it's a fantastic move really good and I've said it in the previous video uh, for the main codex review I hope that it is for Astra Militarum it could be a, a winning move as well uh, if Games Workshop go ahead and do that for them also you know so the main Astra Militarum codex and then you can buy a supplement say Talon Desert Raiders this kind of size that would be God, that would be something I really would okay so and imagine you get people then collecting multiple regiments I know I'd be tempted to go for multiple regiments so just seeing that the format here is a fantastic idea I think it's going to work really well and then I hope it works for uh, the astronaut time also maybe chaos space range as well so the first among equals the realm of ultramar Chapter organisation, yeah, they can dedicate more space to this. First company, look, all the information on these here, this is brilliant. Second company, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Chapter command, it's the armoury. Successor chapters, Seagull Warriors, they're cool. Castellans of the Rift. Annals of the Ultramarines, Age of Darkness, First Tyrannic War, Rise of the Primarch, the Era Indomitus, Chronicles of the Ultramarines here. And then some of the characters that have been taken out of the Standard Codex are now put into the dedicated supplement here. So you can get more information on your Ultramarine characters. So Gilliman, Calgar, Yonagar, these are all great models now in plastic. Uh, Tigurius, now in plastic as well. Chaplain Cassius, Captain Sicarius, Sergeant Tellian, Sergeant Kronos. Tyrannic War veterans have made a comeback, which is great. It's a great thing, great idea for those. Very fitting for the old terrains, famous for their fights against uh, the Tyrants. And then again, they can dedicate more space now to a showcase specifically for ultramarines. So Excellent reference for your painting. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a great colour scheme. So James is, can you imagine how excited James is uh, that Games Workshop have released uh, this here. All painted up in blue. Primark's chosen. Not a standard marine in sight here. So all the new models entirely. So it gives you your points up front here. So Captain Sicarius is 100 points. This includes all the war gifts. This is what you're paying no extra. Captain uh, Chaplain Cassius 85, Chapter Ancient 75, Chapter Champion 55, Chief Librarian Tigurius 130, Honor Guard 20 points each, Malnius Calgar. 200 points, Rabuti Gilliman taking a points reduction, apparently 350 points now. Uh, Sergeant Kronos is 30, Sergeant Tellian is 65, Tyrannic War Veterans are 16 points each, and the Victrix Honor Guard are 30 points each. So, 
I'm not going to spend too long on Gilliman here. Uh, he's familiar to Space Marine players, power level 18. Nine wounds for this guy, six attacks. I've faced him many times before. He's a beast for sure. Hand of Dominion, rapid fire three. Strength six, minus one, two damage. The Emperor's sword, fights a strength eight in total, minus four, three damage. And any sixes to wound is D3 mortal wounds. It's got all the Angels of Death rules, so an extra attack on the charge now for him. <laughs> so he's affected by the doctrines as well. Um, Armor of Fate, three plus in one save. Uh, the four plus he can return to play. Uh, you get three command points if he's the Warlord. Fantastic. Now apparently, let's just check these. Master battle, add one to advance and charge rolls made for friendly Imperium units while severe 12 Gilliman. That's superb. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by models in friendly Imperium units while severe 12 of this model. So yeah, he helps any Imperial units. You can reroll morale test taken friendly Imperium units while severe 12 of him. And uh, the 13th Primarch, you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by models in friendly ultramarines units whilst the units are in six inches of him real wound rolls of one protects made by friendly ultramarines units whilst in six of this model so he's good for any imperial army that is with areas get him out. i think i've killed him i can't remember i think i've brought him down in games many have tried and failed against him he truly is amazing uh, marnius kalgar next i'll cover uh, the rules now for him power level 11 movement 6 weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus strength 4 toughness 5 8 wounds God, a lot of wounds God, 6 attacks you know and then plus 1 on the charge now leadership 9 or 2 up save he's fantastic gauntlets of ultra morale rapid fire 2 strength 4 minus 1 2 damage range 24 and the gauntlets times 2 strength there's no minus to damage with them as uh, fighting strength 8 AP minus 3 and D3 damage, not straight 3, only D3. As you can 4 plus in one save. And in addition, all damage suffered by cow guys halved, rounding up. So 8 wounds and you're halving the damage against him. And then Master Tactician, you get 2 command points for him as well. And his chapter master, reroll hit rolls. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by models in friendly ultra range units whilst within 6 inches of this model. So, very solid choice for sure. You know, if, for those of you not keen on Gilliman, you know, he's, he's quite common now, then Kalgar's definitely a solid option for sure. Absolutely rock solid. Uh, the Victrix Honor Guard. Uh, power level 3, movement 6, weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4 toughness 4, 3 wounds, 4 attacks, fantastic base number of attacks, then extra attack on the charge as well. Now, leadership 9 2 up save. They got power swords and they got honor of McCrag. But a friendly ultramarines character model in three, you lose any wounds as a result of an attack mate against this model. You can attempt to intercept the attack because it's a two plus. Uh, the model doesn't lose the wound, and this unit suffers a mortal wound for those for each of those wounds. Only one attempt can be made for each attack. Uh, the unit can perform heroic interventions if it were a character. A three plus invad save with the shield. The Ultima Storm Shield and Kalgar's on the guard. If your army is Battle Forge, this unit does not take up a slot. That includes Marnius, the Marnius Kalgar model. But they were worth having around Marnius Kalgar for sure. They're really going to add to the durability of him. Really, oh God, that's a great combo. So, Chief Librarian Tigurius. Yeah. So he can draw powers, it's interesting, he can take powers from Codex Space Marines, the Librarius Discipline, uh, but also uh, the set from this book here, the Indomitus Discipline, on page 78, it's interesting. So do the Ultramarines have access to some decent psychic powers, we'll check those out. Uh, his power level is 7, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 3, plus strength, 4 toughness 4, 5 wins, 4 attacks, leadership, none, 3 up, so. So, uh, a good solid set line for him. Uh, the Rod of Tiguris, plus 3 strength, final strength 7, AP minus 3, he's pretty powerful, and D3 damage. On that, he's affected by Angels of Death, Hood of Hellfire, 
Um, when a psychic test is taken for this model, you can re-roll the result for the psychic test or deny the witch test is taken for this model, add one to the total. Right, so he's very solid, very, very reliable psyker. Master of Prescience, start the battle round. You can select one for any ultra range unit within six to the end of that battle round when resolving an attack against that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. He can manifest two and deny two. He knows smite and three powers from the Librarius Discipline or three powers from the Indomitus Discipline. So I don't think you can mix and match by the way that's worded. You've got to choose which discipline you're going to go for. Uh, so either the ones that I've already covered in the Codex review for Space Marines or take a look now at the Indomitus here. Yeah. Imagine some of these are going to be pretty good. So, uh, precognition, warp charge value of five. It's so very easy to go make this one go off. Good if his re rolls and bonuses. If manifested in, to the start of the next psychic phase, this psychic has a five plus in one save, and when resolving an attack made against the psychic, subtract one from the hit roll. So, now it's like a little backup to add a bit of protection. Scry's gaze, so warp charge value of seven. If manifest, if your army is battle forged, you could choose to immediately gain a command point. If you choose not to, then once this turn resolve an attack made by model in a friendly ultra unit within 18 of the psyche, you can re-roll the hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll. So quite a tactical one there. Uh, telepathic assault is a warp charge value of seven. If manifest, select one enemy unit within 24, invisible to the psyche, roll 2d6, add two to the result. Unit suffers one mortal wound. For each point by which the total exceeds the highest leadership characteristic in that unit. So it's going to be 7 or 8 usually. You're in 2d6 plus 2 to try and beat that. So yeah, it could be potentially quite nasty that one. It's very good because you can pick on characters as long as you can see the character. It's that one. I like that one there. And it's a good range on it. Nice healthy range of 24 as well. So yeah, and with all of his re-rolls... And, and pluses and so on. Uh, it's quite likely to make that go off and to get a pretty good score on it as well. Okay, so yeah, telepathic assault is um, that's the one to go for. Storm of the Emperor's Wrath. That's very good. That one. Uh, it, it's a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select the nearest enemy unit of an 18, visible to the psyker. Roll one d6 for each model in the unit. On a six, it's a mortal wound. Yeah, that one's okay as well. One's all right. Uh, psychic shackles. It's a warp charge value of six. If manifest, select one enemy unit of 18, invisible to the psychic, to the start of your next psychic phase. Half the movement characteristic rounding up of models in that unit. When a charge roll advance roll is made for the unit, subtract one from the roll. The unit cannot be affected by both this psychic power and the Tenebrous Curse psychic power at the same time. Yeah, I'd have a tactical one there to slow a unit down, which again would prove useful. So we're quite defensive and enhancing sort of Psychic powers here, mostly, apart from this one. Empiric channeling, it's warp charge value of 5. If manifest, to select one for any ultra means librarian model within 12 of the Psyker. I guess that could be himself until, I think, until the end of this psychic phase when a psychic test is taken for that model, add 2 to the total, and that model does not suffer perils of the warp on a roll of a double one, double six. So, this is a big question then. Can he uh, bless himself with this power? And combine that with that telepathic assault, you could turn that into an absolute bad, murderous power. If you're rolling 2d6 plus 2, plus 2 again, and then uh, plus. So I just don't say this, add one again. So you've got a total plus 5. So something to talk about in the comments there. Can he. Uh, affect himself with that. He's an ultra range library model within 12. I, I think he can, in which case it's easy going to make that go off with uh, a 5. So he's going to get plus 2 to that uh, psychic test, plus 2 on this telepathic assault. That's terrifying. It's character assassination here. If that's the combo you want to go for, he'll be, if, and if, that, if that's possible, He's a psyker to be feared on the table. That is terrifying possibility there. Because, with, you know, with plus five, no matter what the leadership is, you've got a chance of really uh, ratcheting up some wounds. Wow, okay. So, 
he's one to watch for sure. Chaplin Cassius next, power level 5. Movement 6, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 4 toughness 5, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. That is armed with the Infernus. So you choose one of the profiles, you go for a Flamer, uh, range 8, assault D6, strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage, or mastercrafted bolt gun, uh, usual rules for that. Uh, the Artificer Crozius, plus 2 strength, AP minus 2 and 2 damage, slightly better, 4 plus one save. And then, uh, Spiritual Leader, for any Ultra Range units in this, use this model's leadership, also in 6 inches, which is 9. Inspired Retribution, when a friendly Ultra Range model is destroyed as a result of an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in an, in an enemy unit, whilst that friendly model's units are in 6 inches of this model, roll 1d6 on a 6, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound after it has fought. Okay, so a little bit of bonus there. And there's Listeners of Hate, that's your reroll hit rolls. And two litanies from the litanies of battle. Uh, see Codex Space Marines. At the start of the, at the start of the battle round, the model can recite two litanies it knows that have not already been recited by a friendly model in that battle round. Roll one d6 for each, one three plus. Uh, then it takes effect. So he gets access to two. So yeah, it's a souped up chaplain. Pretty good. And chaplains, as reviewed in the previous uh, the Codex, the main Codex review, they're pretty good. Now these uh, litanies that they can use. So, very cool. Yeah, Chapman Cass, yes, it's good. Captain Sicarius, movement 6, power level 5, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2, plus strength 4, toughness 4, 5 wins, 4 attacks, leadership none, 2 up save. Uh, the Artisan Plasma Pistol, range 12, pistol 1, strength 8, minus 3, and 2 damage, there's no penalty there, firing it's just permanently supercharged. Uh, the, the Talisarian Tempest Blade, Strength 4, A for minus 3, D3 damage. When resolving an attack made by this weapon, an unmodified wound roll of 6 inflicts D3 mortal wounds. It's not that terrifying, really. Only 5 cent strength 4. Uh, 4 plus 7 save angels of death. Right, so battle reroll hit rolls of 1 for ultra range units within 6. And battle forged heroes at the start of the battle round, you can select one for any ultra range unit within 6 of this model. Till the end of the battle round, that unit has the Defenders of Humanity ability. So, now he's a bit tame. I think Sicarius is quite tame. No. If I had a choice between him and Tigurius, I would go for the Psyker. I reckon. And Kalgar's way better. So. Yeah. 100 points for Sicarius. Tigurius, 130. Yeah, Kalgar, 200. Sergeant Tellian, power level 4. Uh, movement 7. Quick scout. Whip skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 4 toughness 4, 4 wounds. 2 attacks, leash 8 and 4 up save. It's got the quietest weapon here. It's uh, range 36, heavy 2 strength 4 minus 2, 2 damage. Uh, you can target characters with it. Resolve an attack mode with this weapon a 6 plus, inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. Got angels of death. Voice of experience, the start of your shooting phase, you can select an ultra range scout unit in three. What was in that unit to have ballistic skill two plus to the end of the phase? So it's okay. Camo cloak, plus two to save and froze for cover. And concealed positions, the same as scouts, you can infiltrate in. Uh, again, not that deadly, really. And he'll cost you 65. It's a cheap HQ, it's okay. Uh, Sergeant Cronus. Power level 2. So 30 point upgrade. And it'll get you the model, which can disembark with Blizzard Skill 2. Plus. Comes with a servo arm. And uh, so, tank command here. Instead of being set up on the battlefield during deployment, this model must begin the battle inside a commanding tank. Uh, you'll, when mustering your army, select one ultra range vehicle from your army for Sergeant Kronos to command. It has one of the following keywords. So Rhino, Razorback, Predator, Vindicator, Whirlwind, Hunter, Stalker, Land Raider. Alright, so you can stick him in a Land Raider, that's pretty cool. Whilst the vehicle model is being commanded by Kronos, it has a 2 plus ballistic skill. Even when it has suffered damage. Oh. Oh. What does that mean? 
even when it suffered damage. So he keeps the two plus ballistic skill no matter what the damage is on the vehicle. Okay. That's interesting. Gains character and Sergeant Kronos keywords. In addition, at the start of your turn, that model gains a lost wound. Whilst commanding the tank, Sergeant Kronos can cannot attack with his bolt pistol, server one, prank crack grenades. If a vehicle is being commanded by Kronos, it's destroyed. Set up this model within six inches uh, of that vehicle model in the same manner as a model disembarking from a transport. So even when it has taken suffered damage, so I think he keeps that vehicle firing at two plus no matter what damage it's taken. If that's the case, he is a must for ultramarines. If you've got vehicles with good firepower, wow. This is brilliant. Very, very good. Chapter Ancient, power level 4. Uh, so, looking at strength and toughness for uh, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, 2 up, save. Weapon skill, bless skill, 3 plus. It's just armed with a power sword. Uh, and then the banner is 4 plus to shoot or attack with before the model is removed from play. Yeah, but specific to Ultramarines. Chapter Champion. It's going to be very similar to. Uh, it's going to be very similar to um, what I've already covered in the Codex. Honor Guard, power level two, three plus weapon skill, and ballistic skill, strength four, toughness four, two wounds, two attacks, leadership nine, two up, save. Power axe plus one strength, vehicle minus two, one damage. And Honor Guard, uh, so they're protecting the characters again. And then Tyrannic War Veterans. Uh, 16 points a time. For that you'll get Paddle of 3 for 1 Veteran Sergeant and 3 War Veterans. You just get an extra attack. And that's it, and Sergeant's on 3 attacks total is 9. Okay, so you've got Special Issue Bolt Gun. So that's what they come with, range 30, rapid fire 1, strength 4, minus 2, 1 damage. And you can do combat squads, angels of death, and bane of tyranids. When resolve an attack made by model in this unit against the tyranids unit, you can re-roll the hit roll, and you can re-roll the wound roll. Cool, so you can let off some blistering firepower here. And it's any attack, so it's firepower in close combat. Yeah, so they'd be useful for picking off sort of the lighter infantry, picking off... Um, Gaunts and Hummer Gaunts and so on. You're re-rolling, you hit some wounds. Pretty good. And just sitting there, remaining stationary and letting loose with lots of shots. Great. And the old models, the old lead models, James has them, they're fantastic models. It's great to see those being included as well. So I, it's nice. I think Ultramarine, Ultramarine's players are going to be happy. Games Workshop haven't just shelved these uh, units and models. They've, um, they've put them in here, so that's great. It's very, very good. So yes, there's loads of new models, Primaris and so on, but uh, they're still remembering uh, the other models in the collection as well, so it's very good. So Courage and Honour. So uh, abilities here, if your army's battle forged, in addition to the detachments, detachment abilities gained from Codex Space Marines, units in your army with the Combat Doctrine's ability Gain the signs of Gilliman ability so long as, with the exception of unaligned units, every unit from your army is an Ultrarines unit, or every unit from your army is from the same Ultrarines successor chapter. So, signs of Gilliman. When, this, when the last tactical doctrine is active, models with this ability that move your movement phase but do not advance or fall back can make attacks of range weapons in the following shooting phase as if the unit had remained stationary this turn. Wow. God. Brilliant. That is, oh God, that's very good. So you can manoeuvre around, you know, like you've got an intercessor squad, uh, you should, you need to, to get the double shots at long range, you need to sit still, but with ultra range you can move them, as long as you don't advance, and still get to fire those double shots. So, Science are given a fantastic role here uh, for the ultra range for sure. Just covering successor chapters. Discussing how that affects warlord traits, relics, and stratagems, and psychic powers. Uh, and tactical objectives. Yeah, just clarifying that for you just there. So all or traits then. It tells you who has what. So adept of the codex, Manius Kalgar has this one here. Uh, whilst the warlord is on the battlefield, you can 
uh, roll 1d6 for each command point you spend. To use a stratagem on a 5 plus, that command point is refunded. You can only have one command point refunded per battle round by this warlock trait. Next, Master of Strategy. Uh, Tigurius has this one. Once per battle round, if this warlord is on the battlefield, you can select one from the Ultra Engine within 6 of the warlord. To the end of that battle round, when a unit in this model makes an attack, the tactical doctrine is considered to be active. Okay. Okay, so that's a, a, a sort of again another sort of tactical bonus there for that one. Calm under fire. Uh, who has that one? Nobody. Okay, so resolve an attack made with a ranged weapon by a friendly ultra engine model with a unit within six inches of this warlord. During turn in which it fell back, do not subtract one from the hit roll. Okay, so not bad. Uh, Paragon of War. Sicarius has this one. Resolve an attack made by this warlord. An unmodified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal wound. On the target, in addition to any other damage. Okay. Uh, nobility made manifest. This is a Rebute Gilliban. Friendly Ultramarines, infantry units, and Ultramarine bike units can perform heroic intervention as if they were characters. <laughs> so they can all pile in whilst they're in six inches of the Warlord. Cool. And they're Warden of McCrag, uh, which Cassius has this. The Warlord can perform heroic intervention if there are enemy units within six, with them instead of three inches, and you can move six instead of three. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Traits there. Yes, and the other great thing about these supplements is you're going to get unique relics specifically for the chapters here. So, Game Games Workshop can dedicate a nice lot of space uh, for these things here as well. So, it's, it really has worked out to be a, a brilliant idea. So, relics of McCrag. So this is the unusual rules here, it's the soldier's blade. So it replaces your power sword, mastercraft, power sword, or combat knife. Uh, it's uh, plus one strength, it minus four and two damage. So it's okay. Sanctic Halo, captain, model, or a master, chapter master, model only. A model from this army has a three plus in one save. And can attempt to deny one psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase in the same manner as a psycho. So yeah, Sanctic Halo is great. Standard of the of McCraig inviolate chapter ancient or ancient model only add one to text characteristic of models in ultra range units also within six for any ultra range models automatically pass them around within 12. nice yeah good banner that one definitely stack that up with the plus one bonus on the charge you can start generating a lot of attacks uh, armor of konor Terminator only, model this relic has a 4 plus in one save and resolve an attack against this model, halve any damage inflicted, not a good one. Helm of Censure, resolve an attack made by model this relic, you can reroll hit rolls of one and you can reroll wound rolls of one. Resolve an attack made by models against Adeptus' starters unit or Heretic starters unit, add one to the hit roll and add one to the wound roll. Another good one, these, these relics are good. Uh, Vengeance of Ultramar, uh, replaces a Storm Bolter, you get Rapid Fire 4. So that could be eight shots at close range, or if you sit still, range 24, strength 4, minus 0, 1 damage. Uh, or resolve an attack against a unit other than a vehicle, it's re-roll the wounds. Not that scary though, really. And then uh, the Trentian Cloak. It's a 5 plus 7 one save. And at the start of your movement phase, you regain D3 lost wounds. Cool. Yeah, it's a great relics there. So, uh, the special issue war gear, Ultra Rains and their successors have within their armories an unparalleled wealth of war gear garnered over long millennia of war. This resource grants the commanders of the signs of Gilliman yet another avenue by which they can specialise their forces to meet their ever shifting strategic priorities in the, galaxy, in the galaxy at war. If your army is led by Ultra Rains Warlord or a Warlord drawn of the Ultra Rains successors chapter, you can give one of the following special issue relics to Ultramarine's character model from your army. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, 
character one of your army is drawn from an ultra-range successor chapter instead of giving them a relic from Codex Space Marines. These are considered to be chapter relics for all rules purposes. Named characters and vehicle models cannot be given any of the following relics. So the Adamantine Mantle, a model of this relic would lose a wound, roll 1d6 and a 5 plus the wound is not lost, so that's helpful for sure. Uh, model of this relic has a save of 2 plus and a 5 plus invod save, yeah, artificial armour, master crafted weapon. So I take it you can't stack these two together, and you, even if you've got standard ultra range armour you're choosing one or the other, unless you're paying your, your command points for an extra relic. You can't take a character that said I'll take a relic from here and a special issue will give from here. I don't think so. I think they count as relics. So I'm just wondering why they split these called one relics of McGrag and then one special issue will give. Uh, Mastercrafted weapon. Uh, when you give this model this relic, select on weapon this model is equipped with. Cannot wear your weapon its profile includes Mastercrafted. Add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon. Uh, that weapon is considered to be a chapter relic. Digital weapons, model this relic fights to make additional attack with this close combat weapon profile. And resolving that attack if a hit is scored, it's one more to wound. And the attack sequence ends. Hmm. Uh, relic we have Vengeance. Once we're battle at the start of the fight phase, the model of this relic can reveal the relic we. When it does, to the end of that phase, add one detects characteristic of models in friendly chapter units, pass within six of that model. That's a good one. It's good. Seal of Oath. The start of the first battle round before the first turn begins, select one enemy unit. You can reroll hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks made by friendly chapter units against the enemy units, pass that friendly units within six of a model with this relic. So that's very helpful. You're up against some tough target charging in multiple units. Reroll hits and wounds. Brilliant. If you really wanted to get stuck in, that's a great one. Hell Fury Bolts. When you give a model this relic, select one bolt weapon. Uh, that model is equipped with. When the bearer shoots with that weapon, you can choose to fire a Hell Fury Bolt. If you do, you can only make one attack with this weapon. When resolving the attack, if it scores a hit, it inflicts one more to wound. On the target, and the attack sequence ends. That's it. At the Sunroth Pistol, uh, for Plasma Pistol here, it's uh, just permanently you know, supercharged. Range 12, pistol 2 though, strength 8, minus 3, and 2 damage. So that's okay, plenty of options, so many options now. And now, Ultramarines get two pages of relics. Gosh. James is going to be a happy boy here with all of these. Martial Precision uses stratagem, it's one command point. Uh, before resolving an attack by Bulk Trains model from your army in the shooting phase, resolving that attack, do not make a hit roll, it automatically scores a hit. Okay, so just as you need it, it's a bit sort of a guaranteed hit. Useful. Now useful. There's times in the game you just need to get that hit, so that's useful enough. Vengeance for Calf. One command point. Use a strategy of an ultra range unit from your army is chosen to fight in the fight phase until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by melee weapon by model in that unit against a word bearer's unit. Uh, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll as well. Great. Resolving an attack with a melee weapon. Yeah, it's quite limited though. It's just one attack. Inspiring command. Uh, one command point for inspiring command. Use a stretch to start the shooting phase or the fight phase. Select an ultra range chapter master. Captain or lieutenant from your army until the end of that phase, the range of that model's aura abilities is increased by three. Okay, so they're all okay ish at the moment. It's not bad. Cycle of War. Use one command point, use a stratagem at the start of the battle round, and if Ultra Range Wall of your army is on the battlefield and the Assault Doctrine was active during the previous battle round, the currently active doctrine is changed, so the Devastated Doctrine is now active. So you could switch that one command point. Uh, rapid Deployment. The start is two command points. The start of the first battle round before the first turn begins. Select up to three ultra range units from your army that are on, on the battlefield. Remove them from the battlefield and set them up again. So it's a redeploy. Uh, useful, tactically useful. Again, sort of getting a sort of a tactical theme going on here with the ultramarines uh, throughout this supplement here. Scion or Sons of Gilliman, one command point. Use the strategy of an ultra range infantry or ultra range bike unit if your army is chosen to shoot in the shooting phase or in the fight phase. If that unit has the troops battlefield roll until the end of the 
phase when resolving an attack made by that unit, you can reroll hit roll. A hit roll. Otherwise, until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by that unit, you can reroll hit rolls of one. Reroll a hit roll. So it's okay. Uh, avenge the Fallen. One command point. Use a stratagem and ultra his unit for an army is destroyed as a result of an attack by, by an enemy unit. To the end of the battle, resolve an attack made by ultra his model from your army against that enemy unit. We roll hit rolls of one. Again, it's quite tame here. None of these, apart from rapid deployment, that's the one I would you know keep close by it. One that's usually I go through my stack of stratagems in the game and then just lay out the, the priority ones, ones I don't want to forget. But these ones here. Other than rapid deployment, pretty tame here. Uh, courage and honor, one command point. Use the strategy at the start of the morale phase. Add one's leadership characteristic of Ultrian's model surrounding to the end of the phase. Again, not that exciting really. Tactical expertise, two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of the movement phase if a tactical doctrine is active until the start of the next battle round resolve an attack made by rapid fire or assault weapons by an ultra trains model from your army unmodified rune roll of six uh, of that weapon improves rune roll of six the arm penetra penetration characteristic of that weapon is improved by an additional one gonna use a stratagem once per battle each six is to gain just a minus one it's okay you need a big unit to make it worthwhile. Alright, okay. Fall back and re-engage. Use the stratagem, it's one or two command points. Use the stratagem and ultra and unit if your army falls back. This stratagem costs one command point if the unit has the codex discipline, chapter tactic, otherwise it costs two. That unit can shoot and charge this turn. If the unit has the codex discipline, chapter tactic, uh, the unit, uh, the hit roll penalty from that tactic falling back and shooting does not apply unit this turn. That's, that one's great. Nicely themed one. Powerful enough. Fall back and re-engage. It's a good one. So there's a couple here. Rapid deployment and this one uh, are good so far. The others are not really very significant here. Defensive focus. Two command points. Use a stratagem after an ultra range unit from your army is chosen as a target of a charge. Select up to three other friendly ultra range units within an inch from enemy units uh, that are more than an inch away from enemy units and within six of the targeted unit. The selected units can fire overwatch. Brilliant. Now there's a good one. Wow. So you have other units that can support you of overwatch. Fantastic. Yeah, really, really good. So there's a couple here, real gems. One, two, three. Exemplar of the chapter. One command point. Use a strategy after nominating an Ultramarines model that is not named, not a named character. Uh, to be a warlord, you can generate an additional warlord trait for them. This must be from Ultramarine's warlord traits table. Each warlord trait for army must be unique. If randomly generated, real or duplicate results, you can use a stratagem once an extra. Right. Squad doctrines, one command point. Use a stratagem to start the movement phase. Select an Ultramarine's infantry, Ultramarine's bike unit from your army. That, uh, then select either the Devastated Tactical Assault Doctrine to the start of the next movement phase that unit gains the bonus of that Doctrine instead of the Active Combat Doctrine. That one's brilliant. That's very useful as well. Just at the right point, you need the particular Doctrine. Play that card. That is, um, that's superb. That is a very good one. Uh, Honoured Sergeant, one command point. Uh, use your strategy before the battle. Select one Ultra Range model from your army that has the word Sergeant in the profile. That model can have one of the following special issue or gear relics, even though they are not a character. Okay. Cool, she gives something to Sergeant. Nice. Mastercrafted weapon, digital weapons, health, fury bolt, sun or off pistol. All the relics your army includes must be different and given to different models. Honored Sergeant, nice. Nice fluff themed one, that one. Tactical insight, two command points. Use your strategy after generating tactical objectives and altering wall of your army that's on the battlefield. Immediately discard your tactical objectives. For each tactical objective, discard. Generate one tactical objective. You can use a stratagem in the mission if you're playing. If you're playing tactical objectives, you can use a stratagem once for battle. Yeah, no, useful. So you get a bad deck, discard and reselect. That's very useful as well. Again, so there's tactical theme going on. And then honoured by McCrag. One command point, use a strategy after nominating model drawn from your ultra successor chapters to be your warlord. You can give a relic 
I've got a crag to a character model for an is drawn from an ultra range successor chapter instead of giving them a special issue or get relic. Alright, oh, so it lets you take from that selection. Or a chapter relic from Codex Space Marines. If you do replace the ultra range keyword for all instances on that relic, if any, with that model's chapter keyword, and it's once for battle use. Yeah, so it's the ones, so some of them here are just quite insignificant, but there's some real nicely themed and very useful stratagems here for sure. So some people say, well, I've, I'm getting new codex, I've got ultra range, should I bother getting the supplement? I think they're worth getting. Games Workshop have crafted these that you really, really would be missing out. Because the like, relics, the stratagems they put together here all matching the theme and style of the ultra range and you're getting rewarded uh, following that particular theme. So it's well worth it. These stratagems are good. Some great ones. So we've already checked out the Indomitus Discipline, we covered that earlier on. So I'll run through these, a lot of people ask me to cover these. So you get six unique tactical objectives uh, to add into your uh, deck for Maelstrom of War missions. So uh, secure objective Primus, score one victory point if you achieved any take and hold or storm and defend tactical objectives at the end of this turn. Fine, unflinching heroism, score one victory point if this tactical objective has been active. At the end of two consecutive turns, discard this tactical objective and ultra range unit for army fouls morale test. Okay, and then champions of the Imperium. Score on victory point if at least one enemy character unit was destroyed or result in attack made by an ultra range unit from army this turn. Score D3, victory points instead of the enemy warlord was destroyed uh, as a result in attack made by an ultra range unit from your army. Okay. We march from a crag. Score one victory point if at least three ultra range units from your army advanced made a charge move this turn and ended their move wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. Right, follow the codex. Score D3 victory points if achieved at least two other tactical objectives at the end of this turn. So you get just rewarded for that. And then proof of doctrine. Score one victory point if at least one enemy unit was destroyed as a result of attack made by ultra range unit from your army this turn. Two victory points instead of at least three enemy units was, was so destroyed. And three victory points instead if six enemy units were destroyed. It's got double the number of victory points instead of the tactical doctrine was active this turn. Cool. So there you go. And you get a name generator as well. So you can roll D66 and you can get all these different names generating a name for a character. So they really have thought of everything here <laughs> for this. So Codex Supplement Ultra Range, oh, it's great. So, you know, it's the level of detail, even they can dedicate space to all of the fluff and the background story, your history, uh, your color palette for all your painting and so on, all the special rules, you got your relics, uh, your warlord traits, unique psychic powers, all the characters covered in there as well. So it's a great idea. So a, a superb move from Games Workshop, the main chapters to get these and it's sort of catering for everything. I really hate editions and Space Marines now really in their element. This is um, a really good move from Games Workshop. So uh, fantastic idea and it looks like an excellent supplement here for the Ultra Marines. Do plan to cover White Scars next. I've got the book here. We'll cover that in a separate video. Uh, same treatment as you've seen here in this video. Just sort of a nice deep and tactical review of that publication as well. Check out gamingfigures.com, you can get your discount 40k stuff from them. Uh, but thanks to Games Workshop for sending me this copy ahead of time uh, to review. But there it is, that's the review for Codex Supplement Ultramarines. Leave your own comments in uh, the comment section below. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.